Today we're going to look at a plugin that sort of breaks the rules when it comes to traditional guitar plugins. Now you may or may not have heard of Aurora DSP, but they make some pretty interesting guitar and bass plugins. The guitar plugin is called Rhino and the bass plugin is called Mammoth. And the thing that is really interesting to me about these plugins is the way the user interface works. Traditionally with guitar amp sim type plugins, what the developers are trying to do is recreate the experience as best they can of you actually sitting in front of an amplifier and dialing it in. And the vast majority of them are actually just emulating sought after amplifiers. This is where Aurora DSP separates itself from the rest of its competitors in the amp sim plugin space. What Aurora DSP has done has given you a fresh modern looking plugin interface and let's face it, we're working with computers here. As cool as it is to recreate classic amplifiers in the box, in a computer, in digital format, why? Why do we do it? With the vast possibilities that are out there in the digital landscape, I think what Aurora DSP is doing is really interesting and the approach they're taking is sort of new. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to walk you through both of the plugins and show you how I would go about dialing in tones for each of them. And then at the end of the video, I will give you guys my honest opinion on the plugins and you know, the pros and cons of each of them that I found while I was dialing them in. And just give you guys kind of my overall perspective in case you've been looking at purchasing these plugins. But before we start deep diving into these plugins, let's check out how they sound in a mix. What's up guys, hopefully you enjoyed that demo. We are going to go over how I got the guitar and bass tones with the Rhino and the Mammoth plugins. They're excellent plugins. I've been using these quite a bit lately. Okay, so first things first, I have the track opened up here. So let's go to the factory default here and I will show you how the Rhino plugin works and go over some of the different settings. And let's uh, play this. <laughs> And I actually really like the sound of this plugin when you load it up. I think it sounds cool. Let's start out here with the input block. So we can adjust the input gain or you know, we can cut it back if we need to. Um, I don't need to do that. These are DIs of a guitar and I don't really need any boosting there. So I just left that at zero. Next we have the gate and we can turn the gate on and off. And for any of these blocks, if you want expanded functionality, you just click the little button up here to expand it. Now for me, the gate is more useful when I am using this as a standalone plugin to monitor myself while I'm tracking, which by the way, yes, both of these plugins come in standalone mode, which is excellent. I mean, if you make a guitar or bass plugin in 2021 and it doesn't have a standalone mode, what are you doing? And then over here we have the preamp section and if we expand that we can see there are four different channels and each amp has its own special attribute i guess i would call it like here this one has the fire mode this one has headroom mode so we have the red channel yellow blue 
and purple. And you can see they all have their own flavors. And then we have our different boost options here. So we have, you know, a screamer, which is more of like an overdrive type of boost. Brute, which is more of a distortion type boost. Fuzz, which is a fuzz type boost. And then we have push, which is a compressor. Over here on the right, we have the controls that you would expect to find on, you know, an amplifier, the drive, the low, the mid, and the treble. Except one of the interesting things is if you actually click on this and drag it down, you can go negative 12 and all the way up to positive 12 on these controls. So more control than you would have over a typical amplifier. Okay, so I already know that I like this blue channel. This blue channel to me is a little bit like a, maybe a 5150 or a modern sort of high gain sound. Although you could get that with the purple channel, but uh, I kind of like the blue channel here. So let's start there. And then let's boost it with this screamer. And we'll keep the amount on 10. You can sort of blend this into taste too if you wanted to. But I'm just gonna go full 10 right there. And you can see here when I increase the drive, we do lose volume as we get more saturated. But we tend to just have a little bit more body with this lower drive setting. So I'm gonna leave that there. And headroom is just adding like a little bit more response in the top end there. It's very subtle, but I like it. Dial these controls here. I'm already liking the sound of that quite a bit and we haven't even got to the IR section yet, but, but let's try out some of these other boost types here too. And then here's the fuzz. And then lastly here, we have a compressor, which is something that I like more on the clean channel. Let's listen to some of the other channels here just real quick so we have a frame of reference. So this is the one that I like, but you also have this purple mode. This yellow one's kind of cool. It's more like Marshall-y sounding. Same thing with the red channel here. Again, all very cool. I just find myself gravitating towards this blue channel quite a bit here. By the way, you also have a day and nighttime mode here, as well as a tuner. I think all modern plugins should have a standalone mode and tuners as a requirement. If you really want it to be an all-in-one thing, having those two options is a necessity in my opinion. Let's load up the power IR section here. So we have three different modes for our IRs. We have flat, studio, and live. And each colors the sound a little bit depending on your usage. Uh, I'm gonna stick with studio mode here. And then we have our power amp controls here. So we have presence, resonance, and we have hot as well. So you can actually boost up the signal going into your IR if you want. And you can kind of get some interesting results that way. Here, I'll show you. I'm gonna leave that at zero though. And then here's the different IRs that come with the plugin. You can mix them together by dragging around this little node here and just kind of placing it uh, where you would like these IRs blended. You can also add your own IRs to replace any one of these by just clicking this plus button and then loading up the IR. But I'm gonna stick with the IRs that come with the plugin for now. And then you can turn each one of the IRs on or off if you just don't want to blend it in. Down here we have presets for what different IRs are selected. So let's go with the rhythm setting here and then I will move this guy around to blend some IRs together. Uh, let's just start with it in the middle and we're listening to all four of them. <laughs>
something like that right there. Sounds pretty good. Now let's open up the EQ and start messing with this. So you have these quick controls on the front panel here if you just wanna quickly move things up and down. But if you open this guy up, you can actually change the Q and the frequency of each one of these bands, as well as choosing the type of frequency adjustment you are making. So we're gonna do a low cut here. So there's also a tone matching feature here, which is really cool, you know, if you want to match up your guitar tone to something else, but uh, it's just not something that I really have gotten the hang of yet. You can match the tone to another signal, and then you can load up these tones and blend in how much you want of each one. big difference there. Okay, and then let's go over the output mode here. We have this tight option, which you can turn on. And what this does is it kind of clamps down on the low end. And you can see the more I push down on that, the tighter the low end gets. So that's a pretty cool feature. You also have a limiter here. And then of course the release for the limiter. I usually don't use these features on the output, but it's really cool that they exist. And then we have our overall output volume right here. Now that we have that guitar dialed in, let's go to the solo section here. Let's open this guy up and let me show you what I have going on here for the solo. So in the effects one block, we have a phaser going on. Let's open this guy up. And you can see these are the different controls we have. We want to get real crazy. We have a chorus. We have a flanger. So those are our modulation based effects. And then over here we have time based effects. Uh, we have echo, delay, classic. And then you can also load your own convolution reverb. If you just have that reverb that you can't live without, you can load up that wave file here and use your own reverb IR. Three different types, ping pong, slap back, and classic. I think that these effects sound really good. I really like the simplistic controls and how easy they are to dial in. And uh, overall, you know, the sound quality is what is most important and the sound quality is great. Okay, so that is what's going on with the guitars in this track. Now let's go over to the bass. Looks beautiful in 4K. We love it. Let's listen to just the bass. Okay, so here's the bass sound that I have dialed in. You can see I'm boosting the input just a little bit. Uh, there are three different drive modes. I like it about there. And then of course we have this button hot, which is almost like a boost for the bass preamp. If you just want that extra bit of distortion in there, you can do that. You have your low, mid, and high controls. And then you have these melt and these brute buttons here, and I'll show you what they do. 
Brute almost scoops the mids a little bit and brings out the highs more. Whereas Melt is more of like a bass boost. And then over here on the right, we have the IR section. We have a six by 10, a four by 12, an eight by 10. This grind IR comes with the Christian Cole preset that is included with the plugin. And I like this IR a lot. It sounds kind of like. It's got a little bit more high than this eight by 10 and just sounds a little bit more EQ'd in. And then we have the blend mode over here, which is gonna blend in between your low and your high controls. Let's probably rock that right at 50%. And then down here, these are your bass controls. So we can choose where we want the bass crossover to be. I actually like to bring this down a little bit. right about there and then you have your bass knob which is pretty self-explanatory and then you have growl and what this does is add some harmonic distortion to your low end here I'll solo it and then lastly over here you have your compressor which is titled slam so this is how hard you want to clamp down on your bass I actually like the bass to move a little bit, so I'm gonna leave it about negative three decibels. And then you have your output control. And so with Rhino on both guitars and the solo section, as well as the bass, this is what you end up with. So what do you guys think of the Rhino and the Mammoth Aurora DSP plugins? Do you like the approach that they took with these plugins? Let me know down in the comments below. I really like these plugins and since Aurora DSP originally reached out to me, I've spent a lot of time dialing these plugins in and you have probably heard these plugins in mixes on my channel. I think that the user interface and the approach that they took in designing it is really cool and I find myself using my ears a lot more to dial in these guitar tones rather than just looking at a simulation of an amp and just sort of trying to dial it in the way that I would dial in the real amp. And to me, that's the really cool thing about these plugins. They seem a lot less limited than other amp sim VSTs. And even though these features are available in a lot of other amp sims, I actually find myself using them a lot more, specifically with the Rhino, just because of the user interface and it's all just right there on the one panel. But as far as the cons go, I do find myself having to spend a lot more time dialing in something to get it exactly where I want to. Because there are so many controls and so many different possibilities for your sound, you can really go down a rabbit hole trying to get your specific sound. And in my experience, that can actually be a detriment, especially if you're trying to write a song or, you know, get a YouTube demo done. However, overall, I think it's a really excellent plugin, and I'm really excited to see what future updates bring and what future plugins Aurora DSP develops. So if you're looking for a plugin that takes a new, fresh approach and you're tired of all the same amplifiers that keep getting simulated over and over again, then maybe Maybe check it out. I will leave a link in the description below for you. Special thanks to all of my awesome patrons for helping me bring you videos like this one. And if you're interested in joining my Patreon, there's a link for that in the description below. And as always, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.